Hi, I'm James Stout. Let's hang out. Lots of channels on here make copycat versions of McDonald's burgers. And just as a disclaimer, these are great recipes from great creators. I have no beef with any of those channels, but they aren't making real McDonald's beef patties. Like I said, they're making great burgers and I love great burgers, but I don't want a great burger. I want a McDonald's burger. And I think I figured out the secret. When I was a kid, the rumor was that McDonald's burgers were made from kangaroos. I, I don't know why we believed that. As I grew up, I heard other stories like they were made of rat meat or ground up worms or the factory they bought the beef from was called 100% beef. Out of curiosity, what myths did you hear growing up? Because the truth is McDonald's burgers are made from 100% beef. That's a fact. And you might say, well, of course, they grind up whole cows or they use lips, hooves and eyeballs, silly. But that's not true either. Why are we all prone to believe these other things? I think the reason is if you like burgers, you've likely made them at home. And how do you do that? Well, you buy ground meat. If you're fancy, you might even get some whole cuts of beef and grind it up yourself. Maybe add some seasoning, form it into a patty, cook it and eat it. If you're a burger lover like me, you can picture it in your mind, the sensation, the mouthfeel, the texture, the flavor of a homemade burger. It's glorious, but it's not this. So how does McDonald's make their burgers? Well, after a cow takes a one-way trip to an abattoir, McDonald's gets their meat trimmings, which is 80% lean and 20% fat. Then they put them in a grinding machine, form them into patties, flash freeze them, and finally cook them at their restaurants. Somewhere in that process, something happens to make it go from what you'd make at home to a McDonald's patty. Now back to those copycat recipes. As good as they are, they make the patties you could make at home yourself, but it's not a McDonald's burger. And I want to make a McDonald's burger that you can make at home. I watched so much McDonald's propaganda to figure out the missing link. Remember, the process is cow, 80-20 beef, ground formed, flash frozen, cooked, and eaten. So where does the magic happen? McDonald's will say that it's flash frozen. It locks in the flavor or, or some nonsense like that. But we've all had frozen burgers, both homemade and factory processed ones. It doesn't matter. They don't taste like McDonald's. And I don't think it's the clamshell grills they use. In the old days, they would use a standard grill just to flip the burgers. And they still do that at places like Wendy's. From what I read on the internet, all the old timers say the taste is basically the same since they were young. So my theory is it happens much earlier in the process. So I started this journey at the beginning. Maybe, just maybe, it's the breed of cow. But I couldn't find any reliable source online to tell us which one that was. So I asked ChatGPT, what breed of cattle does McDonald's use for their burgers? And it said, McDonald's primarily uses a crossbreed of cattle for their beef rather than a specific breed. They often source beef from various suppliers and regions, so the exact breed can vary. However, they typically look for cattle that meet their quality and safety standards. Keep in mind that the specifics of their sourcing may change over time, so it's a good idea to check with the company for the most current information. So that was a bust, but it did give me a lead. I went directly to the McDonald's website to find out what breed of cattle they use. It wasn't listed there, so I emailed them and you're not going to believe this, but they actually got back to me. This is an actual email from McDonald's support. Hello, James. Thank you for taking the time to contact McDonald's customer care regarding our ingredients and nutritional information. Our nutrition facts page on McDonald's.com has the most current information about nutrition, calories, and ingredients. You can also use the nutrition calculator if you would like more detailed and specific information about a custom order. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reply to this email or give us a call at 1-800-BIG-MAX. We hope to have the opportunity of serving you again soon under the golden arches. Sincerely, McDonald's Customer Care. So I gave up on the cattle theory for two reasons. First, they aren't going to tell us. And I don't think they're necessarily hiding it. I just think most people think a cow is a cow, so who cares? And second, they are a global company that probably uses whatever breed they can get based on their location. Yet a McDonald's burger tastes basically the same all over the world. So I went back to the drawing board. The one thing we know is they use real meat. Their website says 100% beef, no fillers, 
additives, or preservatives. Let's talk about pink slime. W what is it? Well, let's say you have a bunch of cow bones that still have meat on them. Waste not, want not, right? So how do you get the meat off those? Meat scientists figured out if you put them in a centrifuge, which is like a supercharged version of your washer on the spin cycle, you get all the meat off. That's a process called mechanically separated meat. But you want to make sure it's safe to eat. So you treat it with some chemicals. One of those chemicals, supposedly, is ammonia. Now, if this is your first time hearing that, it sounds probably pretty gross to you. And in the early 20 teens, when everyone found out about this, they were all grossed out. The public outcry was so loud, McDonald's stopped using pink slime over a decade ago. But how do they keep their burgers tasting the same, both with texture and consistency? And this happened before, during, and after using pink slime. This led me to my second theory. If it's not the freezing, or the cooking, or the cows, or the butchering, or the meat, there's only one place left to look, the grinding of the meat. So my theory is they emulsify their meat. Wait, you might say, an emulsification is when two liquids are homogenized. And that is true, as Ohio State agrees with you saying, We have conventionally referred to a finely chopped meat mixture as a meat emulsion. This is somewhat a misnomer as the so-called meat emulsion consists of solid fat particles dispersed in a liquid continuous phase. It might be more appropriate to refer to this mixture as a meat batter. Guys, we're going to make a meat batter. So here's the deal. I don't have an industrial meat grinder, but I do have a knockoff ninja style blender. Here's what I'm feeling. One, I really want to show that you can do this with fresh whole cuts of beef. You could use ground meat, but for this, I want to prove once and for all, you can make a McDonald's style burger from actual beef. Second, to make the batter, we need to add a liquid to act as like a binder. I'm thinking a little water should do the trick. Now you might ask, is what you're doing a straight ticket to hell? Is there a McDonald's in hell? Is this even legal? Yes, yes, and yes. According to the U.S. government's Code of Federal Regulations, Title IX on Animals and Animal Products, Chapter 3, Subchapter A, Subpart B, Subsection 319.15C says, quote, Beef patties can have added water only in amounts such that the product characteristics are essentially that of a meat patty. So we're going to use fresh cuts of meat with a little water to make our beef batter better. Now, I'm not saying this is how McDonald's makes their burgers. I'm sure a billion dollar company has their own proprietary grinders and methods. I'm also fairly confident that they're not using Blender that they also use to make their morning smoothie. Let's do this. I'm using 180 grams of fresh meat McDonald's uses trimmings from chuck, round, and sirloin. Today, I'm going to use lean round and a fatty brisket because that's what they had on sale at the store. Make sure you have one cut that has a lot of fat. Also, cut them into small pieces. If you have an Asian market in your area, they often sell thinly sliced cuts of beef. Just don't tell them what you're using it for or they will permanently ban you and everyone you know. I'm going to pop this meat into the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. After that, I'll put it in a blender and add about three tablespoons of water or 45 grams. That should make the batter 225 grams or about four to five burgers. Remember, McDonald's burgers are 1.6 ounces or 45 grams, but we might make ours a little bigger. So you blend them into a homogenous scoop. At this point, the cow soul is realizing what you're trying to do to it. So you might have to push it down with a spoon a few times just to get it all combined. Once you make the beef batter, you'll need a digital scale or just eyeball it. I don't care. I'm using this bun pan with plastic wrap in it and measuring out the burgers. I oiled the plastic wrap so it doesn't stick. Once you spread it out, it will make a burger shape. Put it on an oiled plastic wrapped baking sheet and repeat for the rest of your burger batter. Then you're going to want to put another sheet of oiled plastic wrap on top. Freeze for about two hours. They will be a surprisingly reddish pink. These cook fast, so get your bun ready first. All you need to do is heat up a skillet on a dirty stove top. Don't worry what your friends or family will think. If you're making these burgers, you probably don't have any. And if you do, you won't for very long. Next, put in the burger. 
You can put some minced onion in first if you so desire. Now is when you top it with salt and pepper, but just on one side or it gets a little too salty. Then keep it pressed down for a minute or so, flip it, and press it down for another minute. You should see some of the juices coming out. That's just water and fat. After it's cooked, put the patty on your bun, pray to God or any other higher power as you understand them, and ask for forgiveness for what you've just done. Then enjoy your authentic copycat version of a McDonald's burger. Look at mine compared to the real thing. And that's it. Let me know what you think. By the way, we're not done here yet. So like and subscribe because the gears in my head are turning and I think we need to make a Big Mac. And I'm talking with the perfect sauce. But until next time, thanks for hanging out.